It's Thursday, the 29th of December. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And on my recent trip to Sydney, Australia, I had no idea the extent of the meltdown at Southwest Airlines until we landed, returned back here to Sacramento Airport and saw the number of Southwest 737s parked all over the ramp and all over Terminal B at Sacramento's International Airport. Here's the update on how this historic meltdown occurred. The single largest meltdown in corporate airline aviation history is a train wreck that has been long in coming, but we never understood exactly what was the fundamental cause of the problems at Southwest Airlines until this meltdown recently. Remember back in October of 21, there was the meltdown at Southwest Airlines and it was blamed on weather in Florida and a ATC slowdown. We never got to the root cause of really why these problems were occurring at Southwest Airlines. And the reason is because Southwest Airlines has a very draconian and very effective social media policy and watch group at the airlines. If an employee at Southwest Airlines is caught on social media making a derogatory comment about the airlines, they are terminated or threatened with termination. So as a result, we never got to the bottom of the story as to why they were having these problems. And of course, now we know it's a fundamental lack of investment in information technology that has caused this. But it was an incident at Denver's airport back on 21, from the 21st of December through about the 24th of December that ignited, that started this meltdown before the IT failed. As we all know, Southwest Airlines is a point-to-point -point airline system, but it does operate through other airlines' major hubs. And over here at the major hub of Denver, Colorado, as this bomb cyclone storm began to hit on or about the 21st of December, an operational emergency was declared by management there, specifically regarding the ramp agents. As the temperatures plunged and ramp agents were, of course, have to work outside with the aircraft, were having a more and more difficult time of dealing with the aircraft in these freezing temperatures. A strongly worded memo went out from management to the ramp agents declaring that there was too many people calling in sick and that they were going to have to declare an emergency. And if anybody is sick, they're going to have to have a, a letter from their doctor the day that they return to work. Uh, everybody is going to have to work mandatory overtime. And anybody that is calling in sick that does not have a doctor's letter by the time that they show back up for work, they will be terminated. As this word got around to the ramp agents at Denver, apparently, this has not been verified, upwards of 200 ramp agents quit. And these are jobs that pay about 20 to $28 per hour working with the aircraft out in the weather. Once that hit Denver, the aircraft began to stack up getting parked they couldn't get the aircraft into the gates. When you cannot get the aircraft into the gates, especially in this kind of weather, you have to start canceling flights. So that started a rolling cancellation of flights from Denver, Colorado. Soon those cancellations of flights ended up shutting down the entire Southwest operation, first at Denver, and that was followed by Dallas, St. Louis, Nashville, and Chicago's Midway Airport. The entire Southwest operation was shut down. Now with this many aircraft being parked, this is when the IT problems begin with the SkySolver software that Southwest Airlines uses. This software is circa 1990s vintage 40-year-old software that they use to schedule pilots, flight attendants, crews, and marry them up with the aircraft and form the scheduling sequence. This 1990s software is capable of handling upwards of about 300 changes. We're talking changes in the thousands now and the software was simply overwhelmed and so all the automation for scheduling apparently failed, forcing schedulers to revert to manual scheduling, an extremely complicated job 
completely overwhelming the system, thus forcing the airline to do a complete reset, shut down basically the entire airline, get everything regrouped, and then reopen and start all over. And it looks like, the good news is, it looks like tomorrow, Friday, the 30th of December, they will begin to start flying a what appears to me to be a fairly full schedule as of the time of this recording. As one of the many results of the Colgan Air disaster years ago, the federal government got involved with the FAA and rewrote the FARs, the Federal Aviation Regulations, regarding crew rest for pilots. In so doing, they made it more efficient for the airlines to, <laughs> in what was an effort to try to uh, combat fatigue amongst pilots, the government actually created a system that allows the airlines to use us more efficiently. But it also greatly complicated the scheduling requirements for our flights. There are now one, two, three, four, five, six different FAR regulations that each and every individual pilot and flight have to meet in order to be legal for that flight. It takes incredible IT power, computing power to keep track of this down to the minute or the tenth of a minute to make sure that you are legal. So you need to take all these five different rules, look at their limits, their legal limits, compare that to the actual flight on that actual day to see if you are in fact legal to fly that trip on that day. That takes a lot of computing power and is virtually impossible to do by hand, manually. The easiest way to do it is if you just park everything for three or four days, that resets all these numbers, and now you can marry up nearly anybody to any aircraft and begin to fly the schedule. Compounding the problem for Southwest passengers is Southwest Airlines has no interline agreement with other airlines. Typically with the major airlines, the other major airlines, once you have a flight cancellation, that airline can coordinate with other airlines within the interline agreement to get you rebooked on a completely different airline to get you to your destination. Southwest Airlines does not have that capability. In other words, you're on your own. The same problem with hotels. Once the system is broken down this bad, the airline can no longer has the manpower resource to, to get people into hotels. You're on your own for booking your own hotels. And this is extended to the crews as well. They typically, the company gets you the hotel and you go into crew rest, but they were unable to even accommodate their own crews. This turns into a very abusive situation for the flight crews, flight attendants and pilots. Of course, they can just go get their own hotel, same as the passengers. You're just going to have to go get your own hotel and hope for a reimbursement when after the dust settles. But eventually, this gets to be an abusive situation for the agents, the gate agents inside the airport to where passengers just begin unloading on them. In many cases, unnecessarily so, as the situation is beyond their control. And it got so bad at Nashville's airport that... <laughs> The police showed up and declared that once you no longer have a ticket to fly on an airline and you're inside the terminal, you are deemed a trespasser and thus have to vacate the terminal or be charged with trespassing. As we all know, watching this channel, it takes a series of events or a chain of events before a major mishap happens. Some of the holes in the Swiss cheese that led up to this incident with Southwest Airlines is, well, go all the way back to the beginning of Southwest Airlines, founded by Herb Kelleher, a very hands-on, operations-oriented CEO that fostered the fact that it is the people of the company that are the most important asset to the company. And that's still true to this day. They still have the greatest people working over at Southwest Airlines. But since Herb has moved on, subsequent CEOs have been less operationally oriented and more financially oriented. And this sounds a lot like what's happened over at Boeing Aircraft. And as a result, these financially oriented guys, well, they've they managed to stave off bankruptcy, which is something all the major airlines have gone through and provide good stock growth. However, in the process of saving all this money, they've failed to invest in upgrading their 1990s sky solver software it program now the current ceo knows this has been a problem 
and is now going to be absolutely forced to do something about it. Southwest Airlines is a great company operated by great people and is a very important part of the U.S. economy. And hopefully now the bean counters up in management will make the proper investment in information technology to allow this company to operate smoothly for all of its employees and passengers and customers. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here. Save me a seat. I got to get back to work.